Yeah, certainly a tale of two halves today, um, but really proud of that first half effort. Um, I thought we came out and looked like the team that that we had for most of the year. Um, that's not what it had looked like at all against Oklahoma State. Um, I was not necessarily nervous, I guess, but I, I think a lot of TCU, I think they're really good. Um, you know, Prince and Connor are as good as any combo, two-person combo that we've played against um, the entire season. So we needed to come out and kind of punch first um, and play from the front was what we talked about a little bit. We had kind of gotten away from that or weren't haven't been able to do that through that losing streak a little bit, even though I thought we had played fairly well at times. Um, obviously, second half, uh, you know, what wasn't great offensively, um, but to hold that team to 40, what was it, 49 points. Um, I mean, that's a fantastic effort. Um, thought we did a pretty good job on Prince and Connor, and then you look down and they still kind of get their points, um, but did a good enough job on everybody else, um, you know, just to keep them off balance a little bit. Um, so, yeah, so proud of the effort on the defensive end. Um, obviously lost a couple players, so hopefully, you know, we dodge some bullets there and get them back here pretty soon. Um, but to survive that and, uh, you know, credit to the players and Jayla and Lauren and, you know, everybody really, I thought, just kind of stepped up. Kyle was pretty good again. The, the post play, um, just was was good enough for sure. Um, so anyway, so feel good about it. Um, you know, 23 and six to end it, and 12 and six in the Big 12 is is certainly a solid start. Uh, we talked a little bit about kind of closing the chapter today. We would close the chapter, but there's still going to be a page to turn. And so we'll turn that page now um, sometime tomorrow when we figure out what the next steps are and, and who we play and when we play and those types of things. But um, uh, certainly a, a really good book we've written so far, I think, this year. And, and I think we have plenty of chapters, uh, hopefully, to keep on keep on trucking here over the next few weeks and do something special in March. So Mark, obvious question, JJ's, what, what's her status now? What, what's your heart do? Is it going in your throat when you see her go down? Yeah, no, obviously. Um, yeah, no, you you would feel for any kid. JJ is, you know, certainly the leader of this group, um, you know, on the court, and you never want to see somebody go down. Um, I do not know. I don't have any report for you as of right now. I'm sure over the next couple of days we'll get a better um, get a better report on that one, and hopefully, like I said, we dodge a bullet and, and get her back here healthy pretty soon. Do you know if it's a, an ankle or look like an ankle? I, I, don't uh, I think it's a knee. Change your game because you guys were up, I think, 21 when she went down, and obviously they started to make a run. How, how does that change things? Well, they did, but I, I thought we actually the run came in the fourth quarter. I thought in the third quarter when she went down, we were still we were running good offense, we were getting really good looks, um, we were still turning them over. I thought we were playing our brand of basketball through that stretch. Um, now we didn't make any of those. We didn't make very many of those shots and and turned it over a little bit more um, in that set, uh, third and fourth quarter. Um, cause I think at half we had two, two turnovers and then we ended with 12. So we had 10 in the second half. So that's not good enough. So it just got a little sloppy and loose with the basketball. Um, but again, I thought we defended well enough to kind of keep them at bay. Um, obviously, thankfully we had the big lead at half to kind of, we were able to do that. Um, but yeah, just lost our way a little bit on the offensive end. Um, you know, they were playing zone and man and mixing it up a little bit to probably keep us off balance. Um, but I thought Hemingway's three when they were kind of cutting it down, I don't remember what it was, maybe 11 or 10. And she got it back to 13 or 14 was a, was a really big shot for us, kind of took the pressure off a little bit. You mentioned the other day about Jayla kind of accepting her role and she got to the five big points in the fourth quarter. What's your level of confidence that she's going to make the right plays in that situation? Yeah, no, it's, it's really high right now. Um, you know, she had that stretch where I, uh, just, she just was not herself for a two, th two or three week period. And, and I've thought since then she's, she's playing like a senior right now who knows that the career's, you know, toward the back end, I guess. And so there's the seniors should play that way, right? There's usually a more sense of urgency. They do maybe start to see the end in sight where up until now you don't really see that. And we kind of celebrated them with a little get together last night, you know, got some of the emotion out of the way. And then she was pretty emotional too, um, you know, before the game. But this place means a lot to Jayla, um, you know, and I've said a lot of our identity and toughness is wrapped up into her. Um, but yeah, a lot of blood, sweat and tears for that kid. So I'm really happy that she's playing at the level she is right now. You've got basketball left, but this is the final game here. So, you know, home finale, does it mean anything? But with because you've got so much more basketball to play, does it sort of get lost? Because well, I, I don't know. I don't think it gets lost. I don't want it to get lost. Um, this was a lot of fun in here, and I think we've built a ton of momentum throughout the season. And, you know, I thought it was another really good crowd today. Um, you know, the double headers are a little tricky, but I thought that was a really, really good crowd. And, uh, you know, we didn't give them much to cheer about in the second half, but I thought in that first half, I mean, it was it was fun. It was electric. It has gotten that way as the year's gone on. Um, it, yeah, it, it, we're going to end it here, I guess, but hopefully we do have some really good basketball in front of us to continue to to make the state proud uh, of our women's basketball program and then you know most importantly build it moving forward I think this hopefully is just the beginning of something really special in the Coliseum and Danelle didn't 
I don't think she came back out to the bench. <clears throat> Precautionary test now. What's her next step? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, they were, you know, checking her for, I think, a few different things, but concussion was one of those. So I think they just kept her in the back, um, but did, haven't seen her yet and have not gotten the report on her either. Could you were talking about uh, with the crowd kind of building momentum throughout the few. I, I was kind of looking. I think this might have ended up being the second most for a season uh, average attendance in women's history. Uh, with this being your first year, can you just talk about, you know, you probably remember maybe what it was the first game and then what it was tonight, big difference, and, and how it kind of just kind of snowballed, you know, as a sure, season. Yeah, in a good way, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, night and day difference from where I think we started the year. And, and traditionally it takes time to build the basketball crowd. You know, it's football season and all that stuff too when you start basketball. But, no, it built. And, and honestly, I – when we got here and when I was even in through the interview process, like I thought it, I, I thought we could get to this and I think we can even get to something greater. Um, you know, did, I didn't know if it would happen this year. Didn't know that we'd have necessarily the success that we've had. Um, although I, you know, I dreamed about it and thought that it could happen. And, you know, when you talk to Ren Baker, I think he believes in it. And we knew we had a passionate fan base, I think, that was dying to support it. Um, you know, and so from there, we just, yeah, we did the, what we were supposed to do day to day and kind of tried to build it the right way with these really good kids that have, have been fun to coach. And I think that's what rubs off, or at least I hope it does when people come and watch us play is – man, they're just fun to watch and there's a joy about them and they, you know, they celebrate each other and they play their butts off. And I think that's a lot of what this state is. So, um, yeah, really proud of, of where it started, where it's come. And like I said, I hope it's just the beginning and I hope it, you know, as we keep building it, it just grows and grows and grows and we get this place rocking um, night in and night out. And obviously, I mean, there's still games we played today and then obviously Baylor plays tomorrow. Do you, do you care what seed you guys are or, or, or what bracket or – uh, well, do I care what seed? Sure. Um, yeah, I would love to, you know, be the highest seed we can possibly be. Now, matchups and all, I don't, yeah, I think you got to be careful kind of hoping you play a certain team. I've always tried to kind of steer away from that a little bit, um, you know, but it's just finding momentum is what I would like to do, you know, and, and win one. And then it's funny, like, I think when you get to this time of year, it doesn't take a lot for a ton of momentum to feel your way. Like one win, you know, in Kansas City is going to feel like a, that's a, going to be a great feeling. And then you string another one together, like, wow, you're, you, know, you just start to believe. And then, you know, even if you don't, I've seen people that maybe lose early in their conference tournament and get to the NCAA tournament and you win one and now all of a sudden you got all sorts of momentum and you're a game away from a, a sweet 16 and, you know, what that does for your program. So really it's, it's that for me is, yeah, we've done what we can do. Um, you know, obviously that Oklahoma State game I'd love to have back and if we could have finished Baylor, but you can't live that – like I can't live that way and these kids have battled so hard for me all year that I'm just – I'm proud of where we're at right now. And if you, I, I think honestly if you would have given me 23-6 and six and 12-6 and six before the year started, I probably would have – I think I would have taken you up on that one. You know, and then when you get in it, though, maybe not. But before the year started, like, I probably would have said, yeah, I'll go ahead and take that one. But, um, yeah, we still have plenty of basketball in front of us. And I think that's what the exciting part is, is this isn't – we're not at the end of it. So are you a guy that looks at bracketology? Uh, does anybody, staff, players – do it and, and at least admit it to you? Uh, my son does it um, religiously, and so I think he is in school refreshing that thing. He knows exactly what day that thing comes out and it is on the group chat. Um, so there's a lot of days that I'm in my, like, staff meetings because we meet about every day at 10 o'clock, and that message comes from my son. So I present to the team through Camden Kellogg <laughs> what Bracketology says about us, and he does the same thing with the net. And that updates every day, so we'll get that message, and he will let me know if we moved up or down and how we're doing. And, uh, yeah, he got so rowdy, and I told him to shut up at one point. I was like, dude, you cannot – he's standing up yelling. I won't even tell you what he was yelling, but I was looked at him. I was like, stop, like, stop. You know, but he is passionate, and I love him for that. He, he does care deeply. Can you speak to the team's mental toughness to be able to put aside the mental, the emotion of – senior day and then actually coming out and punching first yeah no they, they did a really good job um part of i don't know if i'd call it a trick but we did like we have their families come in and we treated them to dinner and our team to dinner um last night to get some of that and let them get on the mic and talk and you know just kind of go through some of that emotion um j-lo got pretty emotional today you know before the game but then she was able to put that you know to rest but really all year regardless if it's senior night and i've said this a million times but they just have stayed the course 
you know, even through, you know, win a bunch in a row, lose a, a few in a row, which we were fortunate not to do that very often. But I never doubted. I've never had any doubt in this team to respond. And I even thought after Baylor, I thought mentally we were fine going into Oklahoma State from that loss. Like we had mentally turned the corner. We were ready to go. We just had no juice. We just, it was what, three games in six days. We just, we just weren't great, you know, and, and didn't make shots. And that's the only time all year that I've kind of said that and felt a little disappointed that we didn't put forth you know, a quality effort. Um, but again, coming back from that and everybody talked about the three losses and starts asking me questions about it, but I never had any, any doubt that we wouldn't, I didn't know we were going to win necessarily today, but I knew we'd come out and our effort would be at the level that, that we've grown to expect. Coach, it, it, it was 40 to 19 when JJ went down. So obviously there's a big cushion there, but as that second half began to kind of become a struggle offensively, um, how many adjustments? Like, what from a coach now? I mean, you're probably trying what 10, 20, 30 different things to just try to get a bucket, right? I mean, yeah, you do. I mean, yeah, you're just you're really honestly trying to figure out which player's going, who has the hot hand, you know, who can we get it to in their sweet spot. You know, you're still trying to obviously always, you know, we want to get to the rim first and attack and play through the paint. So, are we doing that? Um, but really, the third quarter, we only lost by two, right. you know, so it wasn't that like we survived that. So, I think we were still up, right? 18 going into the or 19, maybe going into the going into the fourth, yeah, you know, and then we lose that one by 10, and so you know we lost our way a little bit more in the fourth, I thought, um, than the third. I thought we were okay. JJ got hurt, like I said, we were still playing offense the way we wanted to, and, and turning them over a little bit. Um, our guards were still pressuring. We probably got a little tired, you know. It's just some depth again, you know. Danelle's out, JJ's out, you know. So we're playing those other kids a little bit more than than we would have liked. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just searching. Right shots, right kids, right time. Who wants it? You know, never really found it, but we were searching. Yeah, you're right. There was probably 20 or 30 possessions still left, and you're fighting like heck. But we, I thought we defended well enough, so when it didn't all work out, and we told them that in the fourth quarter, like, I, I, don't, I don't know what the offense is going to look like, but you, you're defending well enough to win this game, so gut it out, and, and we'll feel good about it. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank Appreciate you. it all year.